Welcome to this podcast, Holistic Creators, where we share our unique and universal stories about shaping the future for the four Ps, people, planet, purpose, and profit. My name is Manet Kunze. I'm a mental coach and your host of this show. My intention for this show is to inspire you on your path to a holistic future. So welcome. Hello, and welcome to my podcast, Holistic Creators. My name is Monette, and I'm your host. Today, my guest is Troy R. Shadwick. He is a prominent figure in the mindset coaching world and a prolific producer, known for his influential work and leadership in both fields. So welcome to my show. Wow, Sonette, thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be here, and I love your energy. It's certain with me, I can feel that a lot of people definitely feel your energy too as well. So thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here. Yeah, and uh, I know that you are a genius in your zone because you haven't seen me perhaps, but I have been in a lot of calls um, that you have uh, done with Ramey and uh, interpreting his book and all this mindset work. So I'm kind of following you, but kind of hidden as well. So I'm so curious to let the audience also know what I already know and um, yeah, share a little bit about your background. So how do you have you become this person you are right now and how you got your, your, your passion about this mindset work? Well, it all started from me seeing the results in my life. And by the way, I've done a lot of really cool things before getting into this, but the thing that I didn't understand was why I was able to do those things, but not be able to do the big, big things that I really, really wanted to do. And it all changed for me when I started to study this beautiful man named Bob Proctor. You know, um, I, I studied from a lot of people, Tony Robbins, Wayne Dyer, of which I love both of those as well. But then there was something that he was saying, and he kept repeating again and again, But in terms of what he was saying, it wasn't about that. It was about how he was able to communicate it to me in a very simple way so that I can understand. And as I started to study more, as a matter of fact, the book that that was really grabbing me that he was teaching was this book called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. And as he started to engage with helping me to get that and how there's this thinking substance out there that we get to use that that thought energy is the only creative energy there is, that we get to think whatever we want, that thought externalizes itself. It really stirred something beautiful in me. And more specifically, it stirred in with me um, this desire that I had to work with someone in Hollywood. Okay. And this is an important thing because, you know, there was this producer I wanted to work with. I discovered, you know what, I want to make movies. And then I realized that Bob Proctor's best student of which he called him that was this guy named Phil. And then I would listen to Bob talking about all this stuff. And I go, you know what, I really want to work with Phil. But I understood enough that in order for me to work with him, I had to think like him. Now, this is a big deal because, you know, what 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 comes into our life is solely based from how we feel, how we feel comes from how we think. And then from there, I said, okay, well, in order for me to do that, um, I have to start thinking this way, which then led me to learn from Bob. And that's when I decided to become a consultant, for instance, and in, in terms of learning from Bob, because Bob said something, if you really, really want to know how I think and understand how I think, then learn from me. And what's so interesting is as I engaged in that journey and made that decision, because that's the key component, you've got to make a decision. And once you make a decision, you, you fuse with an idea. Then I started to study that material. And then the next thing I know is within a short period of time, now I'm friends with Phil. I'm working with Phil. I started doing things, you know, these crazy things that I didn't know I was going to do solely because of me changing my mindset. And that's ultimately what it came down to. You know, Bob Proctor is a, ma he was a master, he is a master, even though he's passed away, he's really not gone because none of us really die. But, you know, Bob was a master at being able to explain to people the importance of mindset. And that's what's actually happened. And matter of fact, this is what can happen for anyone when they realize when they change their mindset, their life changes. 
And, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. But see, that was my journey. And that's where it really started in a big, beautiful way is understanding the importance of that. And understanding that your mindset is what's set in your mind. And what's set in your mind are your beliefs and habits. And, you know, you'd hear, I'd hear Bob Proctor talking about paradigms and paradigms is a multitude of habits. It's your beliefs. And oh my gosh, it's that when you change your beliefs or habits, which is your mindset, your life changes, which then led me to everything that people are seeing in terms of my results right now. It's all by changing what's happening inside of you. And so now we're here today and, and there's a lot of really great things happening, but the only reason why those things are happening in my life is solely because I changed what was inside of me. And that's a wonderful, beautiful thing. And so that's, you know, where I am today. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's like, no, you start with like the thought, the, the part of the information, then it goes into the energy field. And from there it manifests and yeah. it becomes your reality. And it's not that you, when you change things and you change things, but you still have the same like uh, beliefs about the world, beliefs about yourself, like you know, all these kind of uh, how can I say, uh, blocking beliefs and perhaps even a pattern um, that come from your ancestral line that are not supportive. You can do a lot, but you will not change what is really happening in the in your world. So I think it is yeah. important to understand it starts with a thought and then yeah. you can create. Yeah, that's it. so beautiful that you bring this into this conversation, belief. You know, so I because I didn't understand this in the beginning. I didn't understand that none of us ever go further than what we believe to be true that every single one of us follows through with whatever we believe. Yet, at the same time, the overwhelming majority of us have no idea why the belief is even there. I mean, have you ever like really asked that question, why do I believe what I believe? And, and you know, it's really interesting if you, if you have conversations about this with other people, most people will say, I don't know. <laughs> you know? I don't even know why I believe this. Uh, I'll give you an example. Like, um, I used to be shy. Okay. And if you would ask people, like if I would even ask you, you know, um, uh, have you ever claimed the title of being shy? And most people will say, yeah, I'm shy. Not understanding that they're not shy. It's that they believe that they're shy. See, it's, it's that belief that's inside. And when really, it's not that a person's shy. What it is, is that they've been conditioned to be shy. See, and that's embedded within their belief system. The whole point of that is, is a belief is planted in you. And, and that belief, when it's there, if you understand that it's been planted either by you or the race, it means it can be weeded out. It means it can be changed. You can plant new seeds that lead to the different belief. And to me, that was like one of the most beautiful things that I learned from Bob that I engage with frequently. You know, you, you, you have to understand that, you know, if you don't change what you believe to be true, then nothing different will be done for you. You know, have you ever heard that beautiful jewel of wisdom? It is done unto you as you believe. What's done unto you, the results of your life based on what you believe. Therefore, the, the beautiful key is change your belief, you'll change your life. And you can change it if you'll if you'll do the work if you'll pay the price. Yeah, absolutely. And um, often these beliefs are in the subconscious mind, so people are definitely not aware. But yeah. they, they they have these beliefs, and out of that they make their decisions as well. Yeah, and that's right. The, the, you know what's interesting? Uh, I, Bob shared with me something really cool. It's it's awesome when you dig into this because remember, there's conscious mind, subconscious mind. We actually have two forms of belief, okay? There's the intellectual belief, which doesn't get anything done, okay? And then there's the emotional belief, which is the one that matters. See, a lot of people, for instance, intellectually believe that they can do something, but they're emotionally involved with the belief that they can't. In other words, it's what they feel. And see, the most important thing, though, is that that belief that you have in in you subconsciously, it must go through your conscious part of your mind in order to get there. And see, this is where understanding that is that conscious part of your mind that gets to shape, you know, what's in the heart, because that's what your subconscious mind is, your heart as, as you thinketh in your heart, so are you as you thinketh in your heart, what's in your heart is what you believe the habit you have. And your heart is a loyal servant, but it's not loyal to you, your subconscious 
mind as a loyal servant, but it's not loyal to you. It's loyal to what you've made important, what you've agreed to. And what you've agreed to is what you believe and the habits you have. See, the whole point is, is you, you see, it's by changing that in you, what's in you subconsciously that everything changes. And that's been a beautiful, beautiful thing to be aware of, because then now it's just a matter of, oh, I just have to nourish the new seeds. And, and, and by the way, um, when it comes down to that, um, it's done through reevaluation. And that's been another beautiful awakening too, which has helped to change not only my life, but a lot of other people's lives that I work with is through that reevaluation that you actually change your belief. Hmm. Especially if you have experiences in your childhood and you made up stories that are yeah. not true for you. And now looking back into these experiences, what could be other uh, stories you could have made up out of that? Like yeah. not, if you now would reframe them and yeah, see, okay, Perhaps if I would uh, tell myself another story, I would have a totally different belief. And like the emotion that was connected in this experience would be totally different. So, yeah, yeah but you have to bring this into the awareness first. That's right, because the overwhelming majority of people are completely oblivious in terms of understanding that they can change that belief. I mean, how many times have we heard in society this, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Having said this, what is that? That's a belief. <laughs> and if that's what you believe, guess what? You're right. You know, I love using the analogy of, you know, I can't versus I can. You know, wh whatever one you believe, you're right. And see, this is where a lot of people don't understand that. They don't, they don't understand that just because you've been conditioned to believe something doesn't mean you have to continue with that belief. And in terms of the belief, it's, it's exactly like what you shared, you know. The overwhelming majority of what everyone believes about themselves came from early childhood. Now, this is a huge thing. I'm so grateful for, again, Bob revealing this and helping me to understand this. See, it's through that evaluation that happened in early childhood of the interactions that we've had. See, what, what were we doing then when that was happening? See, what we were doing was we were evaluating ourselves based from those interactions. And this is why I bring up this, you know, our, your beliefs are based on your evaluation. See, it's through that constant repetition of the ideas of which you form a belief. Now, again, why that's so important is because it reveals that the way that you change your belief is through the same process. It's through re-evaluation. Frequently, when we re-evaluate a situation about even about ourselves, about anything, you know what starts to happen? We get, we get more information, we get more knowledge, we get more insight, and then what happens is a re-evaluation happens, therefore the belief changes, therefore the faith increases. And see, that's where, you know, understanding that there's only really two things that you need to study in order to deliver exceptional results that will help you increase your belief comes into play. And I'm so grateful again for learning about this. You know, if you want to increase your level of belief, because it's not a matter of whether or not we believe, it's not a matter of whether or not we live by faith. Every one of us lives by faith and we do it masterfully. The issue is, is we don't understand how to increase the belief so that faith increases. Well, the only two things you need to study intently and understand are just number one, who you truly are. And number two, how your marvelous, miraculous, incredible, powerful mind works, which works according to law. If you make those the primary study in your life to understand those things, everything after that is secondary and will help you to achieve exceptional results in your life in any area of your life. And this is something that the overwhelming majority of people are ignorant of. They're ignorant of who they are and they're ignorant of how powerful their minds are. And this, you know, this brings into play something beautiful that I learned from James Allen. You know, he talks about how, how the number one reason why it's so difficult for why, for why it's so difficult for you to change and why it's so difficult for me to change is not because of human nature. It's not because of human nature. The main reason why it's so difficult to change is because of how prevalent ignorance is around us. Because of how prevalent that ignorance of who we are and how our mind works is completely not in the minds of people. They don't understand it. And then they just operate from more of the same thinking, which then leads to the same results. It's such mm -hmm. a wonderful thing to use in your life. Yeah. And the question, who are you? And yeah, who are you and your identity? 
like this is of course a construct you have about what you believe how you behave what patterns you do have and yeah what lifestyle you do have and then you have your you have created your identity but this That's is right. not- i mean how many people you know <laughs> even for you know when you've had conversations when you when you ask that question who are you what's the most common answer that comes out the role they they have in a business or yeah. the role you have in family or something like that yeah their name their race their skin color that's not you that's not who you are yet that see but that's how we've been conditioned we've been conditioned to think and believe that we're human beings when we're really not uh, we're thought evolved beings but see we identify ourselves with our name or everything physical not understanding that it's the spiritual that leads to the physical and 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 to me it's like it's awesome i mean you, you can see it everywhere social media the news everything's always based on the physical not understanding that whenever you give that attention whenever you focus from that guess what that just keeps coming back and then nothing changes see you're nobody is their race nobody is their skin color nobody is their gender nobody is the mother of father of you know, son of, daughter of, business owner, blah, 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 whatever it is. Remember, those are all concepts. See, who you truly are is a magnificent creative being. You have divinity within you. You have this magnificent power to be able to choose your thoughts and why that's important is because it's the thought energy that's there. Is, 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 that's the only creative power there is. And it's the thoughts that externalize themselves that that form the results in your life see when you harness that when you understand that and when you start thinking that way guess what changes everything mm -hmm. changes and it changes beautifully according to the changes that you've made that were beautiful yeah so what i see is that as soon as i change my thoughts like even doing this actively my vibration changes and this frequency yes. and i'm giving out into the universe like it, it resonates with different kind of people and it brings in synchronicities and it's like okay like putting a switch on and now i'm uh, like on a, on a tv on a different kind of sender and when i go back to like uh, my my belief that i'm in a low vibration then okay also obstacles come up so i think this is is a training as well like how can we bring our, up um Believe that uh, are supportive and how is it that they become natural to us yeah because so you know this is this is such a wonderful point that you're bringing into this conversation because that right there being able to shift the vibration rhythm and remember vibration is nothing more than feeling feeling is the conscious awareness of the vibration you're in see when you're able to control the feeling that's on the stage your life changes and why that's so important is because the vibration that you're in is what determines what you're attracted to and what gets attracted to you. It also determines what you're repelled by and what's repelled from you. And being able to engage with that and to control the feelings that are on the stage is literally the solution to every problem in your life. But again, you brought it up so beautifully. See, it's the thoughts that lead to the feelings. And you said, you know what, if I feel that I'm in a bad vibe or whatever, and this isn't exactly what you said, but this is what I got from it. It's simply, it's simply by changing what you're thinking about and how you're thinking that changes that vibration. Now, again, you asked a wonderful question. Well, then how do we, you know, make the shift and how do we make it so that it's more natural to us now i'm going to engage with this in terms of natural versus normal and i learned this from mary morrissey and this is again a beautiful jewel that helped to change my perspective on things which helped me to make big changes and help other people to make changes as well see in order for an individual or anyone to act according to what's natural it has to be in their nature okay now that's a big deal and again, I want to point this out because there's a huge difference between acting based from what's natural versus acting based on what's normal. In order for someone to act according to their true nature, you have to understand what is in your nature. 
And this is a big deal because when you gain this understanding and awareness that your true nature is that you are a magnificent creative being, that you for, for, you're for expansion, for expression, and also that you have embedded within you this eternal dissatisfaction. Have you ever noticed that? There's this, 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 this dissatisfaction within you. There's always this yearning for more, for better. See, whenever you are engaged in that, then that means you are in harmony with your true nature. See, that's what's natural to you. And see, people, most people don't act according to that. They act in terms of something that's the complete opposite. In other words, what's normal for them is acting in, 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 in terms of, I can't do it. It's not possible. I'm not good enough. See, that's actually acting against what's in your nature because your true nature is, again, for creation, expansion, for expression. Now, why I'm bringing this up is to help you, help, help you to see that it's more about changing what's normal for you. And what's normal for you is what you've accepted. It's what you've allowed into your heart it's what's habitual for you. It's what you believe. Now, that's a big deal. It's a huge, huge difference between the two. See, if you want to move forward in life, what I've discovered, it's not about changing what's natural to you. It's about acting in your true nature and moving forward with growth and expansion, but changing what is comfortable for you, which is what's normal to you. And that's the big thing right there, because what's normal for you What's comfortable for you is embedded in what you believe in the habits. And guess what you can do? You can change that. I mean, have you heard like, even for you, like, have you ever noticed that when you're acting on something that's big and beautiful, right? You've, it's big and beautiful. And maybe you've been even reminding yourself to think positive and you've been reminding yourself to act positively, but then there's the struggle, right? Have you, you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever, you, know, you feel like, and you're going, what the heck is going on here? Now, keep in mind, as you are moving forward, you're acting in your true nature, okay, which is really great. You're, you're acting on getting away from that dissatisfaction, which is embedded within you. But in terms of, you think in terms of the struggle, why are you struggling? See, the only reason why we struggle is solely because we're used to thinking a certain way. See, it's not normal for us. You follow me? See the difference between the two? See, and so the whole key with regards to moving forward in life is acting in what's natural for you, which is, you know, allowing yourself to always move forward, but then changing what's normal for you and change by changing your beliefs and habits. And see, right there is literally the solution to every problem in anyone's life. Because again, the only reason why you struggle and the only reason why I struggle is solely because what's normal for us, in other words, our mindset, what we believe and the habits that we have, doesn't recognize what we're doing. Now, you can say, like, for instance, second nature, you know, people say that. But again, I want to emphasize it's not about what's it being natural for you, because I understand why that's being shared. It's easy for you. It's about making it easy for you based on what's normal for you. And guess what? You, me, all of us can create new norms. And, and by recognizing that, that's when everything changes. That's when, that's when you make quantum leaps in your life, when you realize, oh my gosh, it's just about changing the pattern. It's about recognizing that this, this discomfort I'm having is solely because how I've been thinking, what's, what's been normal to me is not, is not, is not normal, is, is, is not in harmony with what I'm doing. And right there, oh my gosh, I've seen so many people make big changes once they, once that clicks, oh my gosh, it changes magnificently. Yeah. And yeah, of course, we are comfortable in our comfort zone. And, what yeah, is and that's what's normal. Yeah. But yeah so as, that's what's normal. <laughs> but as soon as we stretch out and we, we come into an area that is like, um, still kind of a secret perhaps for us because we have never been in this area but perhaps yeah. it's, it's attractive and we want to go there so but then there's a discomfort like why is this <laughs> why isn't it easy when it's when all you really need to know you know like like what bob would say you know you only need to know two things in order to get a different result you just need to know where you are and then you need to have the goal and then what do you do you get to work now that's very simple right it's ridiculously simple, but if it's so simple, then why is it so difficult? Why is the struggle there? See, this is where, again, understanding 
this comes into play. And by the way, that, that in terms of what I just shared with you in terms of the struggle comes from Bruce Lipton. I'm so grateful for him sharing that and, and tying this together. You know, there's a fun exercise that I love to engage with with people. And this is something that can help you. It can help anybody if you just grasp onto it. And it ties into what you're talking about and what you brought into this conversation in terms of, you know, the comfort zone, right? The comfort zone is what's easy for us, right? It's what's effortless for us. And the comfort zone could be something positive or negative, right? Positive or negative. So here, here's a great question for you. You can think of all the things that come easy to you. What are some of the things that come easy to you, Swinette? Positive oh. and negative. Uh, easy is um, coming in contact with people, networking, okay. Uh, okay, the, good. the deep understanding of people. This is super yeah. easy. That's good. Okay, good. And then you also have a beautiful, loving energy. That comes easy to you, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Right? And yeah. then there are probably some other negative things that are there that come easy to you as well. You would recognize that, right? Uh, okay, so, so yeah. here's the big question, though. <laughs> Remember, because it can be positive and negative, okay? The whole point is, is they come easy to you. They are effortless for you, right? Those things, those beautiful things that you shared about you, those are effortless for you. So, but the big question though is, is this, why are those things effortless? Why are they easy? I would say this is in my nature. Yeah. But no, let's go, but let's go deeper and make it simpler. Okay. Why are those things easy for you? Why are they, okay, fine. It's kind of like second nature for you. That's the big question though. Why are those things effortless for you? And, and see, understanding this, breaking it down to be something really simple is going to help you make huge strides. It makes everybody, it, it enables everybody to make huge strides once they understand this. And here's what the answer is. It's very simple. And again, I'm so grateful for Bruce Lipton sharing this. The reason why those things are easy for you, why they're effortless, is solely because your conditioning recognizes the conclusion. Now, really absorb that. Your conditioning. See, your conditioning is a combination of what you believe to be true and the habits you have. See, that's your mindset. Your mindset is what's set in your mind. What's set in your mind are your beliefs and habits. Your beliefs and habits is your conditioning. We talked about being shy. I'm shy not because I am shy. It's because I believe I'm shy and I have the habit of thinking I'm shy. I have the habit of caring about what other people think, right? That's just a habit. It's just a thought pattern inside of you. And see, see, but that's what's normal for you. And that's what's, and all the things that come easy to me is because my conditioning recognizes what I'm doing. It recognizes, recognizes the conclusion. See, it's the pattern inside you subconsciously. As you think in your heart, so are you. What's in your heart, what's in your heart are your beliefs and your habits. See, the reason why it's easy is because your beliefs and your habits recognize what you're doing. And you don't even think about it because it's automatic, right? Now, now that's very simple. Remember, that's, that's the only reason why things are easy for anyone, positive or negative. But now let's go into this other area, okay? Uh, and I know I can feel this from you. You've been diligently working to improve your circumstances in your life, haven't you? Right? And then you've been, you've been reminding yourself to think positively. And then you've been reminding yourself to move into positive action. And, and, and definitely there's a lot of really great automatic things that are already in you. But then even as you're going through this, isn't it interesting how there's a struggle, right? It's like, wait a minute. Why isn't it easy for me to 10x what I want or 20x the result? You recognize that, right? It's like, I know this, but then why isn't it easy? Why isn't it effortless? Why isn't it like second nature to me? Why, why do I struggle? And that's a great question to ask. Most people don't ask that question. They ask the question, but then they're, they're confused. They're frustrated because they intellectually know they can do better, but then they're not doing better. But see, the big question though is, as you're going through that struggle, why are you struggling? Have you ever like dove deep into that? Why does anyone struggle at all? You know, think of a child, for instance, that's learning how to walk. They're struggling to learn how to walk, even in the beginning when you learn how to tie your shoes uh, or you're right or anything like that. Why 
do we struggle? Why is there struggle at all? What's the reason? For me, the reason is that these are learning experiences to grow. So let's go deeper and make it simpler. You don't know. Okay, so this is great. Well, guess what? The reason why you struggle, the reason why I struggle, the reason why everyone struggles, why anyone struggles about anything, is for the same exact reason that things come easy to us. The reason why you struggle, why I struggle, is solely because our conditioning does not recognize the conclusion. Now, really soak in what I'm saying here. That, when I first heard that, I was going, oh, my God, it's true. The only reason why you struggle and I struggle, and think of a kid, right? The only reason why is because what's set in our mind does not recognize what we're doing. It's not normal for us. And the best example I can share with you practically is like, for instance, like, okay, get, get a pen, get a pen. You got a pen and a piece of paper? Okay, here we go. This is such a fun exercise to do. And once you grasp onto this, it makes, it makes going through everything so easy. So hold, your hand, hold the pen in your dominant hand, okay? And I want you on a piece of paper to write your whole name out. Go ahead. Now, I, I want you to know that when you replay this and you watch this, it was effortless for you, wasn't it? Yeah. Easy peasy, right? There wasn't even any conscious thought. It was just a decision, right? Yeah. Now, why was it easy for you? I'm trying to because write. Your, because your conditioning recognized what you were doing. You, you, in other words, that was happening subconsciously. That's why it's easy for you, right? Okay, so now we're going to have some fun here. Take your hand, pen and put it in your non-dominant hand. Are you ambidextrous? Can you write with both hands the same? Yeah, yeah. I can okay, so, so then I'm going to instruct you to put the pen between your toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so okay. I, I can write with both hands. Yeah, but Okay, uh... <laughs> so if you're ambidextrous, but see if it's easy for you to write with your left hand, it's because your conditioning recognizes the conclusion. Yeah. So, But if I were to have you to place that pen between your toes and then write your name. Yeah. Then it becomes difficult. <laughs> It'd be a struggle, wouldn't it? Now, again, why would it be a struggle? Because you would be consciously reminding yourself to write because you know how to do it or whatever. But see, the struggle is there solely because your conditioning doesn't recognize a conclusion. You know that this applies for everything. And this is people don't understand this, which is why so many people are frustrated when they're trying to make changes in their life because they don't understand that it's what's automatic in them that's determining the results in their life. And because they don't change what's automatic in them, the results don't change. So they have all this intellectual information. They know intellectually what to do, but then the results are not, they don't, they don't match with what they know. And then their frustration, confusion comes in play. And next thing you know, it's like, oh, nothing changes. Well, again, why? Because they don't understand that they have to change what's fixed in their mind. They have to change their mindset. And I think about that, that goes, it goes for everything. Everything is delivered the same. If you want a different lifestyle, if you want to live in a different home, you want to earn more money, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, drive a new car, travel all over the place. See, when you, when you go into the discomfort zone, it's so important to recognize that the only reason why that discomfort is happening is because you're used to how you're thinking. And the only way it's going to get comfortable is by you continually going through it until it becomes normal for you. And then from there, you have a new paradigm, and then you're going to have to create another one. <laughs> so good. Yeah. So, and what you said, like, it's, it's not only about, like, having the knowledge about something. So what I see in this, uh, yeah, scene, like, people who are in, in personal development often have, like, a library that is full with books. But yeah. They read one book and then they read the next one and then they yeah. read the next one. But it is not that they are kind of implementing the knowledge into their life to make the changes that they, they yeah read into yeah. these books. In these you books. know, I know people, uh, friends and stuff like that, and they go through the book challenge. Now, I'm not saying it's not important to read because it is, okay? But then all they'll do is they'll go from one book to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And they go, oh, my gosh, I read 50 books or whatever, right? But then, then when you look at the results, nothing's changed. So they form the habit of collecting information, gathering information. And by the way, our society has conditioned us to do that. 
can to gather information. Our society is conditioned to think and believe that knowledge is power when it's not. Knowledge is only potential power. But see, it, the the knowledge is not going to help you, and it will never help you unless you implement it. You know, you will get more out of just studying one great book and reading one paragraph solidly for like a month than you will by going through book to book to book to book to book to book to book. To book, to book, to book. And that's something that most people will not do, not because they don't want to, but because it goes against what they're used to. I mean, you got to you pay the price. And I learned that from, again, Bob Proctor, you know, who, you know, just you're better off just studying one specific paragraph and, and just digging into that to understand it and use it in your life than you are going through a lot. And, and that's changed a lot in my life, hugely. Hmm. Can you give us two examples what has changed, like to make it more precise, like we were speaking now about changing the mindset and what would be an outcome. So what yeah. changed in your life? Well, there's a lot of changes that I'll give you. One of the examples was is working with Phil and knowing Phil. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, remember, like attracts like. Opposites do not attract. Okay. It's a big fallacy. It's a lie. It's like attracts like. You and I are here in this call because we have something in common. See, it's 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 what's in your, we're in harmony with. You know, you know, thinking from the inside out, making changes in our life, understanding that thoughts are things, thoughts are energy, thoughts are the magnets that attract us to things that we think. So some examples, and that was one of them, you know, uh, working with Phil. Here's another example, you know, um, being with Bob, knowing Bob, you know, one, you know, I, when I became a consultant for Bob, you know, I was emotionally involved with him and what was manifested was him driving me to his house and it was so interesting as i was i was there and i was talking to him i said oh my gosh i'm gonna i'm gonna be behind the scenes with you and then on top of that when i was there i remember inside you know thinking and and really latching on to the idea that i was going to connect with him in a way that nobody else has in a very deep emotional way now i didn't know how i was going to do it but guess what all of those things happened And the only reason why those things happened was because I changed what was inside of me. You know, next thing I know is after I'm there, I'm, I'm behind the scenes at the paradigm shifts, you know, talk, you know, talking with him, showing up and doing all this stuff. And then the thing that in terms of connecting with him that I didn't even know that that's what it was, was it had something to do with, you know, who he studied. He studied this guy named Bill Gove. It was a close friend to him. I don't know if you ever heard Bob Proctor speak. Bill Gove was a, an amazing speaker, but he would constantly talk about Bill Gove in, every, you know, in many of his, his, his classes, many of his lectures, many of his events. And I'm going, who is this guy? And I loved Bob so much. I go, you know what? I want to know more about Bill because Bill influenced Bob. And then I went out looking for, for I want to know Bill Gove. So I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, that's not true. I actually found it in one spot on Audible where there was one, there was one Audible that had a group of speakers, Og Mandino, and then Bill Gove was one of them. But that was the only thing I could find from Bill Gove and had heard him speak and go, wow, this is really awesome. But then I wanted to know more and I couldn't find more. And then I was realizing, well, wait a minute. I heard he was, he had records, Earl Nightingale had records. And then I started to search for records and I found four. Check this out. I found four pristine records. And then I order them. Now, this is what's really cool. Those records only cost about 30 to 40 bucks a piece. And I ordered them. They got delivered. And they were in excellent condition, still in their sleeves, unscratched and amazing. And I go, wow, this is great. I have these records. But then something inside of me was like going, oh, my gosh, Bob would love these. You know, I never listened to them. I didn't even listen to them. I got the records. And I said, you know what? I want to give these to Bob. And so I wrapped them up to be nice and beautiful. And I said, this, you know, this would mean so much to him. I'm going to send it to him. And so I ended up sending it over to somebody who was living, you know, by Bob to give it to him for Christmas. And he says, no, I'm not going to give it to him. You got to give it to him yourself in person. And just then there was another event that was another paradigm shift that was coming up. And he says, okay, I'll give it to him in person. And so there I was at the event. I remember I was behind the scenes. And, and then I said, Bob, I have something for you. And then he opened it, he looked at it, and he was awestruck. He couldn't believe this. And people were around, you know, watching this happen. I filmed it. It was, it was amazing to watch what was happening. And he's going, oh, my gosh. 
this is amazing. Where did you find these? And then what happened next was amazing. And I'm not talking about immediately next, but I'm talking within a short period of time. I received a message from Gina and Gina was Bob's, you know, assistant right hand. And Gina, you know, he dictated a message to Gina. And the message was this, Troy, I'm so grateful for what you sent to me. He goes, I'm very fortunate to receive many gifts from many people throughout these events. And he said, without question, yours was the most meaningful I've ever received. Thank you. I will treasure these. Now think about that. You know, that happened. And then I received a message from Gina. Keep in mind, Gina was working with him for 35 years. And she sent a message to me. She goes, Troy, you did a really good thing. He goes, I've been working for him with him for a long time. And I have never seen him so captivated by a gift as the one that you sent him. Now, see, that's just one example of that, which was fantastic that happened. But see, you, you got to think in terms of why it happened. And why it happened was because there were changes inside of me. I mean, those records were available to everyone. Everybody heard him talk about Bill Gove. But I was the one that gave it to him. And now I'm not saying this to brag. I'm sharing, sharing this with you to help you to understand that the only reason why that happened was because I was on that frequency. I, I fused with that connection. And therefore, it happened. It happened. And, and the same thing I see happening with everything. You know, every single one of us attracts what we're in harmony with. And to me, I will, I'll treasure that message forever. It's like, go, wow. It's just like, wow, that happened. And, and, and that's happened, you know, and then, and then Phil Goldfine happened. Oh my gosh, working with Rami Albatrawi. I mean, that, that in itself is something that's, to me, it's like, wow. But remember, everything happens based from like attracts like. And here you got Rami Abitrawi. You know, when I first met him, I was at his house at an event that he had at his house. And I was looking and go, gosh, I want to work with this guy. I'm going to work with this guy. I am working with this guy. I didn't know how I was going to work with him. And But what it is, is I dove into his material and I go, oh my gosh, I just started to discover a lot about him and dove into his heart. Now, remember, uh, there's a beautiful, there's a beautiful um, uh, jewel of wisdom that Bob Proctor shared. He says, you can enter into the spirit of an author if you'll go into the book and ask, what are you really wanting me to understand? you got to remember that when words are written in a book, that's their spirit being expressed in the form of words. And the or words are being organized in a way to share with you how they're thinking. Okay? So think about it. With any book, you can enter. We're studying right now my study group, you know, Your Invisible Power by Genevieve Barand. And when we enter into the spirit of this book, Genevieve Barand's in the call. And so is Thomas Troward, by the way. But see, you know, now I'm working with Ramey to the point of where he has this event, and then he's put me in charge of attracting people to get to the event. And again, see, that's a practical example of that happened. But the only reason why that happened was because I made changes in me. And what's beautiful is, is everyone can make changes in themselves. See, I had to change what I believe to be true. I had to change my habits. And by changing that, remember, that's what that is, is your mindset. What happens is, is you attract to you whatever you're in harmony with. And that's why it's happening. And it's beautiful. It can happen for everyone, anyone and everyone. You see, it's just a matter of whether or not you're willing to do the work. You got to be willing to pay the price. Yeah, and there are some uh, amazing options uh, to to do this because every Saturday, my evening time, there is a possibility to listen to you and listen to Ramey and uh, seeing the interpretation or getting the interpretation mm -hmm. you are giving the people to understand the book uh, Amy, uh, Ramey wrote. Yeah. So can you share a little bit about what is happening on these Saturdays and um, yeah, lead this yeah. a little bit deeper to people to understand about yeah. the special. This is, this is great because Ramey, I you know it's interesting. I've never, I mean, I felt motivated before with regards to doing things, but in terms of being truly inspired to do exceptional and go way beyond um, he's inspired me tremendously. And and for those of you who don't know, Ramey wrote this book, Can You Really Think and Grow Rich? And uh, this, this beautiful man went from 
from homeless just about six years ago to being a billionaire today. And that's important because, you know, you know, you've got to ask what you want in order to make change. And there might be many of you who are seeking to make some big changes in your financial life and in your, in your business life. Well, here's a guy who wrote this book, Can You Really Think and Grow Rich? And to answer the question with an, an astounding yes, but he studied this book, Think and Grow Rich. Now, the difference between these two books is this book here that Napoleon Hill wrote. He wrote it studying people who were successful. And what he discovered was that people who were highly successful, who were delivering exceptional results, he discovered that they lived their life according to principles and that they believed certain things and that they had specific habits. And then what did he do? He put it in the form of a book that's easy to read and understand so that you can adopt those as well. Well, Rami Abitrawi started studying this when he was 12 years old and he embedded it within him. And then from there, he delivered some amazing lie, amazing results. You know, it's interesting if you look at the title here, it's Keys to Unlock an Extraordinary Life. Now, the big question you've got to ask yourself is, well, how does one go from homeless to billionaire in such a short period of time? Well, it's, it's because of beliefs. It's because of habits, of which where Ramey has delivered some incredible success in his life. He's a beautiful man. His heart's amazing. And he wants to give back and he wants to help people to understand these things, which led him you know, us to the idea of having these study calls, which do happen on Saturdays. And I can tell you what, they've been absolutely amazing. We've recorded um, all of the chapters in this book, and all of them are freely available for everyone on YouTube for you to watch them. And again, we record the calls. See, the whole point is, is to show his generosity, to show his genuine heart. He truly wants to give back. And that's what I love about him so much is, is that's how he is, which is why I love working with him. So those calls happen on Saturdays. Now they're not right now, they're not happening every Saturday. It's more like every other Saturday. Having said this, there's still value. You have the the calls that you can replay and watch to at your heart's content. And and by the way, that is a little jewel that needs to be paid close attention to. It's through the repetition of the ideas that your faith is developed. See, you'll get more out of rewatching the same video than you will coming to new calls. And that's an important thing to understand. So yeah, so in order for you know, if you people want to be notified of this, you can just go to winwithramey.com and, and go register for the calls of which I'm engaged with those and helping people to see things, you know, from the point of understanding how he's thinking. And it's really awesome when you engage in it. Hmm. And not only that, um, I see that he is, uh, as you said, someone who wants to give back, but he is also someone who, who wants to create a better world for, for oh, humanity. Oh, hugely, hugely. Yeah. So he, he is absolutely mission driven, uh, being a billionaire and uh, not just uh, creating his wealth, but he, he wants to give it for a reason as well. And therefore he's sharing his wisdom and he, he's sharing, yeah, also the possibility for people to, to network and come together and he's supporting this. Absolutely. You know, that's an important thing to point out here. I mean, really think about it. He doesn't need the money. I mean, he's got... <laughs> That's so much of it. See, he's doing it because it's close to his heart. And he wants to share with people how to achieve that. And to me, that right there speaks volumes. Again, that's a big reason why I'm so attracted to what he's doing, because his heart, his heart is, is, is big, it's beautiful. And then on top of that, he freely shares, you know, the information. But then again, you know, you can collect the information if you don't use it. You know, your life's not going to change. You have to apply the information. And, you know, it's interesting because um, Ramey talks about how some people will get his book. And this book is not that thick. It's super, super thin. It's a very easy read. You can go through it easily in an hour. Um, and most people, when they get the book, oh, I read the book. It's fantastic. But then they, they stop right there. They don't understand that, you know what, it's not going to do you any good to know what's in the book. So you got to understand what's in the book. And this is where the repetition comes into play. you got to use auto-suggestion. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And last but not least, there's an upcoming event. I oh, would yeah. like, yeah, would like to share. And if it is helpful, I can. Uh, I can pull it up on my screen here. You can see it. I can pull it up here if you want to see it. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I can, I have it here so I can, can open it. Yeah. And you can go that way too. Good. Now you can see it. Yeah. So. Okay, good. Yes. Let us know a little bit about this success accelerator that is uh, hosted uh, by Raimi. Yeah. Okay. So um, here's a big question to ask for you, those of you who are seeking change. What do you want? Okay. What is it that you want for your life? Do you want more success in your life? Do you want to attract more money into your life? And that's a really big question because, you know, I can talk about all of this stuff in terms of, you know, what this event is, but this event's going to be absolutely useless for you unless you see that it's going to help you to get what you want. So before I dig into what Success Accelerator is, are you seeking to increase the amount of money that's coming into your life? Are you seeking to understand business better? Are you wanting to understand how to think in a way where your business grows exponentially in a very short period of time? Are you seeking to attract high quality people? Are you seeking to be at peace inside? See, those are really great questions to ask. Now, the reason why I'm asking those questions is because if those are things that you are seeking, and if you resonate with that, and if you're looking for the solution, then the big question that follows that is, well, where do you get those answers? And that's a big, important question, because the most important thing for you, if you are seeking these changes, is understanding that the best way for you to understand it is to learn from someone who's already doing it at the level that's far beyond what you're seeking. Think of it this way. You're not going to be able to learn how to play baseball effectively from someone who's never played baseball or who doesn't understand the principles of playing baseball. Same thing for soccer, acting, playing guitar. Well, here you have Rami Albatrawi who has proven in his results that he gets it. He doesn't know it like, like those professors at schools. They teach business, but they, they're never, ever successful in business. They could never open a successful business because all they do is teach about it. See, he's actually done it. And if this is something that you are seeking and you would love to be able to understand this and also go through something practical and engage with it to where it's not just something that's in you know, an event where you just learn about it and that's it, where you're engaging with it moving forward, then this is for you. And it's called Success Accelerator. Now, as, as we scroll up on this, you know, there's a big, beautiful question. You know, are you ready to amplify your thinking to grow rich? And that's important because it's how you think that matters. One of the most beautiful things that I love to share with people is when you see someone who's successful it's very important that you do not go out there and try to do what they're doing. And that's how we've been conditioned to think. The most important thing for you to do is not to consent to what they're doing. You've got to consent to what's causing them to do what they do. And what's causing every one of us to do what we do is how we feel, which is caused by how we think. See, the most important thing for you to consent to when you are wanting to make change, especially when you're seeing someone who's delivering that change, is consenting to how they think, what they believe, and the habits they have, which is why this statement here is important. Are you ready to amplify your thinking to grow rich? Now, it states here that there's a two-for-one offer that ends in five days, but I'll go over that later on in terms of you being able to find this. Again, this is at winwithramy.com. So if we'll scroll down just a little bit more here, this is important. This event is happening on September 8th, 9th, and 10th in Los Angeles at Ramey's house. Now, again, really think about this, my friends. If you're seeking learning to learn from someone who understands business, who understands how to get things done in a big way, who understands how to attract huge sums of money, you're going to want to come here. It's taking place in Los Angeles at his house. <laughs> think about that one. A live 3D event where we're going to dive into deep, dive deep into mastering the principles to amplify your thinking to go rich. Now, what makes this, this event different? Well, it's very simple. It's this man right here. This is Ramey. Okay? That's Ramey Albatrawi. Again, the thing I want to remind you 
is that this guy went from homeless to billionaire. And if you scroll through this page at winwithremy.com, you'll see more of this. I mean, really think about him. Uh, there's a link that you can that you can click on when you go to this page. See where it says Remy Albatrawi. If you click on that, it'll go to a Wikipedia page that shows you more about him to, to show you the proof of he is who he is. Okay. But the whole point is, is he's on, he, he is someone who has proven through his results that you can do that. And so he went from homeless. That's his home. That's where the event is. That's his private jet. And that's his day Tommaso. See, he brought these things into his life. He attracted these things into his life because he changed how we think. Now, pay, can, pay again, pay close attention to this. The only thing that's in your way is how you're thinking. And here you're going to be able to learn from someone how to think this way. He's orchestrated really great things. Now, in terms of where this goes, this is another reason why this event is so important and so amazing. In this event, we're going to be creating a company. Now, really soak in what I'm saying here. Nothing like this has ever been done. Okay. There's going to be a brand new company created. And in this event, one person, maybe it's going to be you is going to be selected based on their business idea to receive 50% of the Series A units in an LLC that's formed as part of this event. Now, I'm going to help you to understand this uh, a little bit more simply. Okay. A com the company is being created. And then if you scroll down more, you'll see this. 100% of the cash goes into the company, less expenses. Now, we're anticipating 500 people attending, yet we're anticipating 1,000 tickets being sold. Now, only 500 people can attend, but you don't have to attend in order to uh, participate in the growth here. Now, why I'm bringing this up is I want you to really think about this and do the math. 1,000 tickets sold is $1 million. Let's say the cost of the event is $50,000. That means $950,000 is going to go directly into the company. There's no cash reward for anyone. The money is going directly into the company, of which one person is going to win 50% of the shares of the company created. Now, imagine receiving an investment into your business idea that could change your life. Someone is going to be quitting their job on, at, on, on the day of that event. And chances are there's going to be more people that are going to quit their jobs because people at that event are going to be hired to work there in this company. It's going to be life-changing. Now, it, go, it gets even better if you scroll down more. See, it doesn't stop at the event. Ramey's commitment to your success doesn't end there. It's going to continue with the business coaching for the company. Think about that. There's going to be business coaching and mentoring coming from Ramey, a billionaire, someone who has proven through his results that he understands business, that he understands the principles, and he'll continue along through the events with calls, with his guidance, until there's a successful exit or the company is mutually deemed as successful. But then it doesn't stop there. Think about that. It continues well beyond the event. It's something practical. Everyone, win, everyone wins. Now pay close attention to this. Let's say that there's, you know, a thousand tickets sold, but only one winner, you know, there's only one winner chosen. See, now you have 999 other tickets. Well, what do those tickets represent? Well, guess what? 40% of the shares will be divided equally among the remaining ticket holders. You're going to own a part of the company. And then 10% of the Series A units will be donated to the Napoleon Hill Foundation. Why? Because Think and Grow Rich is very personal for, for Ramey, and he wants to give back to help people to understand that they can think and grow rich. Now, think about that. Everyone wins. You're going to win. And by the way, those of you who say like your idea is not chosen and you're in the 40%, you get to attend the calls for the business. Where are you going to find this? It, I mean, it really, it's, it doesn't exist anywhere right now. Not that I know of. And then you'll be able to use what's taught in those calls in your own business and maybe even end up joining the company that's created itself and help there. The whole point is, is you win. And this is cool because within Ramey's book, can you really think and grow rich? He's always thinking from how can everyone win? And clearly, this is something where everyone wins. Now you can scroll down because it gets even well, better. Oh, it gets even better. It gets even better. More, there's even more. Yeah, there's more here. There's so much more here. Um, I can pull it up on, on my page here if you want. Oh, you got it? You can do that. 
There's even more, my friends. See, this is where I want you to hold that there, rewards for the decisive. Okay. Okay. It's important to recognize and understand that the that everything that you enjoy in life, okay, Zoom, your phone, is because somebody made a decision to make it happen. The, only, the people that you respect are the ones who decided to make it happen, which is why this piece is so important. Scroll up a little bit here. Those individuals who recognize the significance of making timely decisions and taking prompt action as identified by Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich will be rewarded with an additional complimentary ticket for each ticket purchase, provided the tickets provided the purchase is made on or before July 31st, 2023. Now really soak in what's being shared here. Ramey recognizes that those who are decisive are the ones who reap the rewards. And he's giving it here as something that you can implement for yourself. See, that's a two for one. The tickets are $1,000, but just as I shared with you, that $1,000, <laughs> that's nothing compared to what you're getting from this. You're being coached and mentored by a millionaire. Now, why that's so important is because the tickets that you buy, those tickets represent a share in the company. Now, that's a big deal. So for you, as you're thinking about this, if this resonates with you, and you would love to learn from this, then it's obviously something that you have to take action for. Now, there's a beautiful thing that's shared here by Ramey on the website you can read, but I want you to stop right here in, this, in terms of this two-for-one ticket offer. And there's no limit to how many tickets you buy, by the way. If you buy five, you'll have 10, which represents 10 shares in the 40% if your idea is not chosen. You're just going to benefit even more. The whole point is, is, this two-for-one ticket offer ends in five days, nine hours, 57 minutes, and now 46 seconds. And if you're watching this as a replay, chances are it's going to be even less than that. The whole point is, is it ends on July 31st, 2023. And as soon as midnight hits Eastern time, it's just going to be one for one. The whole, so this is for you. Take action on this. Don't let this go by. Okay. And if you want to know about the terms and conditions before you close it real quick, you can find all of this at the website. If you scroll down, you'll see terms and conditions. If you click terms and conditions, you'll see everything related to this, this educational event because it is for education and, and also in terms of applying it as well. All right. This is beautiful. Amazing. Wow. This is super, super amazing. And I can only tell people, go there, join this event, and ma make the changes in your life. Yeah, changes don't procrastinate. Don't procrastinate. Just book in and come. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's the procrastinators who, you know, if, if you procrastinate, I'm going to share something with you about this very simply. I know we're on time right now. We're limited on time. If you procrastinate and if it keeps coming back, the only reason why that's happening is because it's a habit. It's not because you're dumb. It's not because you're lazy. You just have the habit of putting things off. Don't allow that to be you. Ramey is where he is right now because he doesn't procrastinate. He acts right where he is with whatever he's got, not caring about how, understanding that how will be shown. So for all of you, if you're seeking the change, and if you would love to learn from someone who understands this in a big, beautiful way, don't put this off. Decide right now with what you've got. This is happening. Take advantage of the situation, this opportunity. Book your ticket. You'll thank yourself later. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for being my guest today. Last but not least, where can people find you? Your website. Well, there's two, two, you can find me in several places. You can find me on TikTok. Um, you'll see my name is Troy R. Chadwick at Troy R. Chadwick. You can find me there. That's where I go live. I guess you say that's where my podcast is. And then you can also go to my website, troyrchadwick.com. Okay. And then also at Win With Ramey in terms of these calls. So the whole point is, the whole point is there's a lot of places for you to get, you, you can find me. Just search my name, Troy R. Chadwick, and then you'll find it there on the web. It's everywhere. TroyRChadwick.com is where you can, yeah, matter of fact, if you wanted to join my study group, you can do that as well. I have a study group. 
Okay, I'm sure people will reach out to you because you shared so much about how to change the mind and change the mindset and become successful, whatever is your definition. So thank you so much for being my guest today. Oh, thank you, Swana. Your energy is beautiful. And again, I'm really grateful for you. Thank you. Yeah. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening or watching my podcast, Holistic Creators. If you want to know more about how I can help and support you, have a look at my website, spiritualchangemaker.com. You can also join my Facebook group, Spiritual Changemakers Community. Stay tuned for the next episode by subscribing to this channel. And you also can check the previous episodes.